Okay, back to the informational slide, and if you need to pause and, and find your notes, do that. I'll give you one second. Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is um, looking at a particle moving along a line, and they give us a position function, but with this position function, one of the rules is that t has to be positive. And they show us what that position function is, and they want to know, you know, all, the answer to all these questions. So find the displacement of the particle during the first two seconds. Well, when you're looking at displacement, don't forget, displacement is the change in position, which is the place where you stop minus the place where you start. So in this case, we're stopping at two seconds and we started at zero seconds and we have the position equation here so all we have to do is look at stop minus start that's it that's all we need so when I do that and I'll, I'll do the stop with with red how about that okay so when I do my stop I'm gonna have 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 3 minus my start so minus and then my start uh, needs to be everything in green I'll put everything in green here so my start is all this and minus the entire start not just part of it well that's going to be 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 3 so basically what I'm going to end up here with is uh, 4 let's see how about let's undo that and do it in red so I'm going to have 4 minus 8 plus 3 minus 3 okay and so when I get done with all of that what am I going to be I'm going to be at minus 4 well minus 4 what's that mean that means that we're going to be 4 units to the left of our starting position 4 units to the left of our starting position that's all it means negative means left positive means right we're going to keep it simple okay so Find the average velocity of the particle during the first four seconds. Well, gosh, average velocity, what was that? That was velocity, instantaneous velocity, um, is not quite what we're ready for here yet because they just they want to know the average over, over, during, while the first four seconds is taking place. So what does that mean? That means that, again, we're going to have a function uh, that looks like the... Um, change in the change in position okay divided by the change in time so delta s over delta t what does that mean that means that we started it's it's all about stop and start it's our position where we stop minus our position where we start okay and our change in time where do we stop with time? We stopped at four seconds. Where do we start with time? We started at zero seconds. We want to know over the entire first four seconds what's the average. Okay, so back over here to my position function. I stop at four. So again, we'll go with red here. That's going to be four squared minus four times four plus three minus, and then we'll do in green my starting position. So green. And that's going to be 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 3. All over where I stopped, which was 4, minus where I started, which was 0. So we're going to work out all of this and see what happens. And as it turns out, uh, let's see, I know that my 3s go away because I've got a a negative 3 here and a positive 3 here that goes away and I'm going to end up with 16 minus 16 over 4 which is a big fat 0 and what are we working with meters and seconds so what's my average velocity 0 meters per second well what's the instantaneous velocity of the particle when t is equal to 4 now this is where it gets interesting because my average over the entire first four seconds was zero. Basically, I have a velocity of not moving on average. Okay, so what about instantaneous? What's going on when t is equal to four? When t is equal to four, what's my speed? What's my velocity? Well, 
Let's just look at position here. We've got position. Let's go ahead and find the derivative of position, which is the same thing as my velocity. And so what I'm going to end up with is 2t minus 4. So find the instantaneous velocity of the particle. I will know then v of 4. What does that mean? That means everywhere I see a t, I plug a 4 in. So I'm going to have 2 times 4 minus 4. 4, that's going to be 8 minus 4, which is 4 meters per second. 4 meters per second. That's my um, instantaneous velocity. Okay? Notice it's different than my average velocity. I'm looking at an average velocity from 0 to 4. Now I'm looking at instantaneous velocity this little tiny snapshot of time okay and so that's why those numbers are so different and they are different amounts okay four seconds instantaneous they're different okay uh, find the acceleration of the particle when t equals four so let's go back over here to our particle again equation and and if I look at the second derivative I'm going to get uh, 2. That's the same thing as your acceleration at any point in time for this particular problem. So when I punch this guy in, uh, I'm looking at 2. So it doesn't matter what I, 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 I am out of variables. So when it asks A of 4 and there is no 4, all I can do is write in 2 meters per second squared. That's it. If there was a T in there, I'd plug a 4 in, but I don't have one of those, okay? Describe the motion of the particle. At what value of T does the particle change directions? So, now this is kind of a tricky little deal. What's going on? Um, think about your instantaneous velocity. Well, let's sketch a rough graph of this guy. And basically what we have, and this is not going to be 100% exact, okay? This is a rough sketch for informational and educational purposes only. And we're going to have some sort of something that looks like this. Okay. Uh, I take that back. It's going to look like this. Okay. I don't know exactly where that vertex is going to be, but I know it's a parabola opening up and it's not on the origin. So the things that are important to note here until I get to my vertex, uh, as I move in this way, my velocity is decreasing. And as I move this way, my velocity is increasing. Okay, so what's going on uh, with this particle then? Like, how do we describe all of that? And, and so again, and we want the parts that are actually going to be greater than zero. So... What we do is um, we're going to take that derivative, 2t minus 4, and let's just set it equal to 0. We can find out where the velocity changed, and that's going to be important to know. So when t is 2, when t is 2, my velocity changed from negative to positive. So, so if I go from zero, less than or equal to t, less than or equal to two, I have a negative velocity, okay? When uh, I go from two and make it less than t and make that less than, I don't know, whatever, we'll just say two is greater than t. At this point in time, what's happening is my velocities are all going to be positive. 